Hey, Mark, thank you so much for joining us from American Resources Corporation. We're excited to have you at our battery technology mini conference. Uh, thanks for setting aside the time today. Appreciate it, Brian. Nice to be here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. So just jumping right in for investors that are unfamiliar with your business, do you think you could provide a, an overview of the company, uh, what it does, and also your role there? Sure. Uh, I'll start with the latter. I'm, I'm Mark Lavragetta. I run corporate finance and communications for, uh, for the parent American Resources Corporation, one of the co-founders of the business uh, and its subsidiaries. Uh, we'll be talking a lot about Realement Technologies, I assume, today, uh, and, uh, and a director of, uh, of Realement Technologies as well. Um, for a brief overview, American Resources um, is a holding company basically a broader uh, uh, infrastructure platform of three operating subsidiaries underneath American Resources. The three operating companies are American Carbon. That's our legacy business focused on the extraction and processing of metallurgical carbon for the global steel production industry. Um, there's American Metals, uh, which was born out of American Carbon's uh, environmental remediation efforts to aggregate um, scrap metal or scrap steel in our, in our cleanup of uh, of, I, I, I would say non-core permits or operations in our in our mining operations, um, processing that that metal and steel for uh, for the electric arc, for arc furnace or recycling uh, steel market, um, repositioning American metals for uh, to be uh, to leverage our our, our reelement technology, our critical mineral refining platform um, in the battery aggregation and and, and pre-processing. Um, step along the way, and then, and then, lastly, uh, Realement Technologies, which is really the exciting part of uh, of our operating companies, um, from a where it does, and uh, from a strategic perspective, and from a timing perspective, uh, it is a pure play critical mineral refining platform. Um, I think as you look at the broader landscape today. Um, Realement Technologies was born with the mandate of how do you take critical mineral refining outside of China and deploy that efficiently? Um, because 90% of the critical mineral refine refining on this planet is done in China. Um, and uh, competing with China is uh, comes with challenges, both environmentally and socially. So um, uh, to be able to compete with China, we have to drive innovation. Um, and that's been the mandate of Realment Technologies of driving efficiency, innovation, in critical mineral refining. We've taken a long standing um, technology that has been used in various under, other industries, pharmaceutical manufacturing, sugar production, um, and applied it with the help of our uh, research and development partners at Purdue University. Um, our, uh, our partners uh, that we've brought in on the engineering and design uh, side that have, uh, that have commercialized this at Eli Lilly and company for, uh, for, for large scale insulin purification um, and applying it to critical mineral refining to where we're able to produce high purity rare earth elements and high purity uh, critical minerals for, uh, for electrification or battery uh, or energy or battery storage. Um, today, we're one of the leading uh, producers here in the United States of, uh, of high purity critical minerals. Our belief is we're at least two years ahead of anybody else in, in the space because we're not taking what the legacy industry has done from a critical mineral standpoint that is done in China. Um, we've been able to, 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 to take an innovative approach and are actually doing it today here in the United States. Yeah, excellent. And, you know, I think that that desire to onshore battery technology, battery production is a theme that we continue to hear throughout this conference that we're hosting and have heard for the past year or so. Um, you know, as companies try to diversify away from China. Uh, so I guess that, that brings us to maybe Realment Technologies. Let's let's delve into that a little bit further. Produces rare earth elements. How do you see demand for those materials evolving over the course of the next year? And, and what are the real challenges and opportunities that lay ahead of that business? Sure. Um, you know, we've started with, with Realment Technologies, we started it on the opposite end of the spectrum. Um, typically, you know, we have a mining division, so you, you, you start with the, at the resource base, or if it's on the recycling side, on the collection and aggregation side of things. So Realement started on the opposite end, on the final stage, separation and purification of critical minerals and rare earth elements. It's important to distinguish that. It's not just rare earth elements, uh, but also the lithiums, cobalts, and nickels that sit out, outside of the, the rare earth element um, part of the periodic table. Um, so so it, it's, it's highly flexible. 
um, the demand for these these minerals um, as we as we kind of undertake this massive energy transition um, that the U.S. The global uh, energy platform, broader energy platform, is undertaking. We're moving from a fossil fuel dependent energy source to when you look at electrification, um, it's highly mineral dependent to make our applications, our technologies run efficiently. We want our smartphones, our electric vehicles to run faster, stronger, smaller to a certain extent, right? You don't want, you want your, you want, you want the, the, the engines and the batteries to have, you know, to plug them in, to be able to run hundreds of miles to plug your, your, your smartphones in and last all day. You need the torque that's required um, in those motors of an electric vehicle to generate the power necessary um, uh, to really to provide what us as consumers demand from our products today. Um, and that is dependent on the critical minerals or if it's you know defense applications, nuclear submarines, um, missile defense systems, missile logistics systems, um, uh, F-35 fighter jets, all of these uh, drones, all of these things are heavy, heavy critical mineral dependent. Um, so as we kind of migrate towards energy transition, um, the demand for these things, especially driven through the, the, the onset and the growth of electric vehicles, um, is, is, expect, is expected to grow um, exponentially um, as, as just the needs for these materials um, are necessary. Um, I think, you know, the challenges that, that, that reside here is we onshore um, the, the production, the manufacturing, um, the supply sources uh, uh, and, 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 and building uh, resilient supply chains here. Um, you know, and I mentioned it earlier in my, in my opening comments is how do you take critical mineral refining outside of the dominant forces of China um, to bring it on shore here to help support that healthy supply chain, whether it's battery or EV or uh, defense, you know, uh, man manufacturing of de defense applications. Um, so we don't have to rely just given the change in ge the geopolitical landscape. Um, you know, that, that's a challenge and refining is a big piece of it. Um, our, our thesis from day one is that deploying um, uh, solvent extraction or hydromet derivatives of, of solvent extraction on the separation and purification on the refining side um, was going to be key because um, producing commodities uh, cost effectively costs matter, logistics matter, all of these things matter um, when, when you're trying to produce uh, and refine raw materials into forms that are needed for, uh, for battery storage, for, for electric motors, um, purity matters uh, from a performance level. So um, bringing that and, and, and creating and standing up that supply chain here, there's a lot of moving pieces. It's very complex. Um, and we're playing a game of catch up uh, today here in the United States. Um, and it's going to ebb and flow. Um, you know, there's going to be winners. There's going to be losers. We like where we sit um, from a strategic standpoint of being a pure play critical mineral refiner um, and starting on that other side of the spectrum of being really focused on what we think is the biggest bottleneck in the supply chain um, is on the refining side and some of the most complex um, things of, of, of how do you efficiently separate and purify these critical minerals and convert them into high purity forms and compounds needed for our applications. And um, I, I, we like we, we think we're ahead of ahead of the uh, the game or ahead of any of our competitors here in the United States because deploying Chinese utilized refining and trying to compete with them on cost that's going to be a real challenge here. Yeah, and thanks for going into that because it is such a critical aspect of call it the future supply chain onshore and nearshore for battery production. Um, you know, as you're as you're thinking about the three aspects of the business, let, let, let's go over to American Carbon for a little bit. What do you think is ahead of that business? And I know that in the past you've mentioned the potential for a spinoff. Um, maybe you can give investors a little bit of more color there. Sure, we're we're steadfast, hyper focused on monetizing our carbon platform. We started building this. Um, asset base in late 2015 um, with a focus on acquiring really high quality um, complexes and reserve base to, to extract, process, and, and, and ship high purity met carbon for, for steel production because of our belief in global infrastructure, the needs for traditional infrastructure, roads, bridges, et cetera. 
Um, and steel is obviously a, uh, is a key component to that. Um, and we, we've done a heavy lift in restructuring those complexes over the past several years, cutting out legacy inefficiencies, um, the, 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 the liabilities that were associated with those, with those um, operations and complexes. Uh, we feel that we have a really uh, clean, um, uh, trimmed down, efficient platform for that global met carbon uh, production base. Um, and uh, when we say monetize our, our, our carbon assets, it, it comes in a variety of ways. Um, we, when we've talked about it publicly, um, either divesting some, some or all of those assets, um, spinning it off into its own, own public vehicle, just given what we have going on in other sides of the business, particularly with re-element technologies, um, leasing out certain complexes, which we which we have at one of our uh, one of our complexes in uh, East Kentucky at Dean Mining, um, to a third party operator um, and to operate them our, our, ourselves as an owner operator. Um, you know we've 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 recently put in place a, a forty five million tax exempt bond uh, to help fully uh, capitalize the growth of Wyoming County uh, coal in uh, in Southwest West Virginia. Um, you know, that's one that access is one of the large last um, large virgin bodies of uh, of mid vol carbon for for steel, uh, the highest quality carbon that you can produce. So um, we are we are focused. We're looking at a multiple of different um, options to be able to monetize it. Like I said, um, um, if we it, you know, we're looking at we have we have a letter of intent on the table to uh, to divest and to sell um, three of those complexes to a strategic buyer. Um, if that doesn't materialize, we will, um, we'll operate it ourselves or we'll spin it out into its own public company to, uh, to finance it individually. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks for that. Thanks for that additional color. Um, you know, one of the things that we've wrote, written about at length and, and certainly heard from, from stakeholders in the, in the industry is that recycling is going to play a very important role in the electrification of transportation and also you know, uh, other aspects of industry. Um, let's talk about American metals for a little bit. What do you think are the opportunities ahead of that business unit? Can you discuss your recycling method a little bit? And, and how do you plan to secure adequate feedstock for, for that process? Sure, it's a great question. Um, <clears throat> and it really does um, distinguish between the subsidiaries under American resources between American metals and re-element and kind of how that sits because re-element has several times gets confused as a battery recycler. Um, and I can continually uh, remind people re-element is a critical mineral refining platform and we bring a lot of value to the, to the recycling market, but it's not solely a, uh, a battery recycler. Uh, we can, we, we can handle a lot, a variety of different feedstocks, uh, when it comes to American metals, it's all about leveraging the capabilities and the unique aspects of, of re-element technologies. Um, American metals will be on the recycling side of things, an aggregator of end of life manufacturing scrap of, uh, in the magnets and, uh, magnets and motors, um, batteries, uh, energy storage solutions um, to be able to process, process them, shred them, uh, discharge batteries, shred them, um, do it properly, chain of custody, logistics, things like that, um, and produce a material that can then be recycled and, and sold into re-element technologies for that purification back into battery and magnet grade products um, that we can sell to, back to our partners. Um, so American Metals is, is unique in that it is... Uh, it is the pre-processing step. And we want re-element technologies to be a pure play refining platform. Um, the the pre-processing, the shredding, it's a little bit dirtier. Um, it's a little bit more of an industrialized process. So it makes sense for us just given, and especially given the flexibility of feedstocks from a recycling standpoint that re-element can handle, um, it, may, it, makes, it makes sense to have that in its separate standalone entity. Um, and you know, not to state the obvious, Recycling makes sense strategically, closing the loop, circularity. There's, these are key themes that are important to the electrification and energy transition movement, keeping those materials here within our borders um, and producing new products, battery grade and magnet grade products for the manufacturing of new goods is, is obviously a, a, a key strategy and it makes common sense. 
Yeah, very good. And now that you've given us a, a good look into each of your verticals, um, holistically, as you're thinking about the business, how are you thinking about international expansion? We spent a lot of time talking about you know the United States domestic um, domestic growth. Um, are there potential JV opportunities out there for you? I guess what what's on your mind as you look at the rest of the world? Yeah, um, yeah. As we've kind of explained, kind of the the broad broader uh, landscape of American resources, and again, how we how do we leverage our unique refining ability within a critical mineral land space, and and the attributes of that technology, and and, and how we and why we want to leverage that is. Um, you know, that innovation that I spoke about, it's um, being able to do it in a smaller footprint, not having the environmental waste, um, um, being socially positive as well from job creation standpoint, training, um, and not having to deal with the harsh chemicals. And, um, you know, when you talk about, you know, the conventional ways of doing things, that's toxic to not only the environment, but to its, to its employees. So, um, you know, leveraging that ability to do it environmentally safe in a modular, smaller footprint, ability, the ability to scale congruently with the, with the feedstock availability from a CapEx and OpEx budget as well. We don't have to make massive bets all at once and build our capacity out to nameplate capacity and then hope the feedstocks um, can support that cost. Um, you can modularly build it, add capacity as the feedstock and as the market requires it and demands it to. Um, so it's much more efficient in how it's deployed and it, and it enables us to compete globally. It, it enables us to deploy that critical mineral out, uh, refining capacity outside of China efficiently. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, that, that's when you talk about international expansion, it's having the ability to do that. So some of the things that we're working on, uh, we've announced publicly, um, you know, a little bit more of a licensing model going into Japan. Um, we're looking at the EU right now, um, with plans of deploying some, some capacity within the EU for the recycling side of things. Um, and, and I'll add this as well. When you, when you think about battery recycling and the evolution of battery chemistry, it's rapidly evolving, which again is another key attribute to leveraging re-element technologies, um, uh, the aspects of it, um, and why we're flexible. You, you look at, you know, typically on battery recyclers, they only want to handle NMC, nickel, manganese, cobalt, chemistry-based batteries, because nickel cobalt brings a lot of value. 63% currently around today of the global energy storage market is lithium iron phosphate or LFP. Iron phosphate doesn't carry much of an inherent value into the market. Lithium does. Um, nobody can recycle lithium iron phosphate batteries economically based off of conventional technologies. For us, it's the most economical for us because we extract lithium first in our process. So a quick extraction, purification of lithium, converting it into battery grade, um, our margin profiles is better at LFP battery chemistry than NMC. Um, so when you look at the, the, the EU um, where LFP battery chemistries are more prominent, um, that, that, that's key as well. And then from an international expansion, looking at, you know, our ability and we've, we've, we've announced some of these publicly, our ability to refine, um, naturally occurring ores, hard rock lithium, for example, is where we're focused, um, being able to deploy that refining capacity in country where, where those resources reside, like Africa. Um, we have expansion plans going on in Western Africa and Southern African regions, um, to be able to deploy that refining capacity local, as well as leveraging that uh, technology to be able to import or export um, certain hard rock or concentrates from, from those regions into the United States to help support um, you know, the growth of our, of our own supply chain here in the US. Yeah, and so we don't, we don't cover the company, obviously. So I'll leave it to you to describe how you view its financial footing. Heading into 2024, uh, perhaps you could give investors a brief overview of you know the current state of things and how you expect them to to move going forward. Yeah, we're, we are we're, we're a unique asset, right? When you look at um, from the capital market standpoint, we're a unique entity. Um, we we have we have a lot of moving parts, um, and I think investors like um, clean, concise stories. And we have a we have a strategic. Uh, you know, initiative um, to unbundle some of our assets, to extract some of that value, get some of the value inherent within American resources, um, better value within the public market. So, 
Um, we've talked about um, spinning out re-element technologies. Um, we have a we have a process in place right now to bring in some capital at the subsidiary re-element level. Um, you know, working on aligning those stars to be able to establish that value as a standalone public entity um, prior to the spin out. Because um, a lot of times people are asking us when, when, when. And I've always, I've always stated that it's, a, it's an exercise of uh, value creation, not an exercise of speed. We wanna do this right, not fast. Um, and then, you know, and we, we've been beneficial because, you know, we have a parent company, um, we, we can generate some cash flow uh, and support the growth of, of Reelement Technologies. But we're at an Reelement's at an evolution now where it's at a point where it can stand alone on its own two feet, we feel like but it does come with some, with some efforts in the capital markets of, of raising some equity capital um, behind that. Um, you know, America, American Carbon, as I mentioned, will we'll plan on, um, again, monetizing it the way that I, we, through divestitures, through spin out or through operations or leases. Um, and then, in, you know, even if we were under a scenario to divest it, you'd have a standalone entity of American uh, resources, which will be, basically American metals inside of it, where we will again leverage, um, you know, re-element technology. And one, our desire is to broaden the resource focus under American resources to not just be met carbon focused, but, but again, leverage it into the critical mineral resource space. So I think you could potentially look at um, some possibilities of American resources taking some ownership interest in critical mineral um, deposits uh, worldwide as we continue to leverage Reelements uh, refining capacity. Um, financially, we're currently sitting on, you know, about forty-five million dollars of cash. Um, some of that's restricted due to the Wyoming uh, coal um, financing, but uh, but but we're not in dire need of, of of any cash. There's no need for us to go to the equity markets now and dilute um, any of our investors at the American Resources level. We'll continue to go through our strategic plan of action to unbundle some of our assets, and um, we've done. You know, we we've we've we financed uh, Wyoming County coal through a tax exempt bond issuance. Um, we've uh, we've recently announced a preliminary approval from the Knott County Fiscal Court to up to 150 million tax exempt bond to support the the brownfield redevelopment of Knott County coal um, for hard rock lithium refining using some of the already in place infrastructure. Um, and as well as some of the other government programs and government grants that are available today, just given the focus uh, of, of the U.S. under the uh, bipartisan infrastructure law and the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, that will that will look to leverage as well. Yeah, very good. So that brings us to you know this time of the year, people are thinking back on 2023. They're thinking forward to 2024. So perhaps for our investors, you could give a you know, brief overview of your biggest achievements in 23 and your outlook for what 24 can hold for the company? That's a great question. And it's exciting. It's an exciting time and exciting question, right? A lot of this comes down to timing, being at the right place at the right time. And, you know, for, for, for investors that, you know, it's what it comes down to. And I really do wholeheartedly believe that we sit at the right place at the right time. Um, you know, I think when you look at the competitive landscape of critical mineral refining, nobody thought out has really thought outside the box like we have. Um, the value proposition is, um, is there room in the marketplace for innovative, cost-competitive critical mineral refining? Or are we just okay with China dominance? Um, I think there is room for it. I think innovation will drive that. And I think we're leading the charge there. We're, very, we're, we're excited at what we've accomplished in, in 2023. You can look at some of our past press releases with um, some of the third party validation and the efficacy of our critical mineral refining technology, our ability to produce battery grade and magnet grade uh, critical and rare earth elements at commercial scale. Nobody else can do that in the United States today. We are doing it today. Um, so that, that, that's, that, that, that's unique. And I think as we continue to, to, to drive forward into next year and beyond, um, we'll continue to you know, bolster our commercial partnerships um, hopefully, we'll bring in some equity capital at the subsidiary level. We'll execute upon a strategic spin out um, and really set the table for investors to uh, um, to you know to benefit in that in that value creation that we're providing for our investors. Um, you know, we I think we do a good job of acquiring assets. 
uh, right. Uh, we just, you know, we recently acquired our Marion facility up in uh, about 45 minutes north of our, of our corporate headquarters, um, 42 acre campus for, re for critical mineral recycling. Um, you know, and we took it over from the, from the municipality of Marion. So our ability to buy assets, right, um, you know, eat the whole apple, if you will, um, and, uh, and, and build value and, and build it, uh, you know, strategically. Um, and again, being at the right place at the right time, I think, you know, that's what our investors can look forward to, um, you know, you know, next year and beyond. Well, we're excited to see it unfold. Uh, thank you very much for your time here with us. And uh, we look forward to speaking with you again very soon. Well, th thank you. Um, it, it, it's a pleasure. We don't take this stuff lightly. Um, we like to talk about our story. Um, uh, it, it's important to talk about our story because, you know, there's a lot of things going on and um, we, we, we appreciate the, the time today and the focus uh, and the attention from, uh, from, from you guys and, uh, and your audience base. So uh, thanks again. And, uh, and uh, we look forward to talking to you as well. Likewise.